Welcome back to another edition of TCM Graduate TV. I'm Kenton Sefcik. Today we're going to do episode two of a viewer question. This one goes out to Candy. She was asking about tonification and reduction methods and was also mentioning, hey, how do I know when I should put needles top down and then bottom up? And I'm going to try and do my best to go through all of this. And then I'm going to give you my opinion on the matter, which may or may not help you. All right, let's get into this. So one of the things we can do is, we'll start with the easy one, we can put needles top down or bottom up. So typically we are taught to put needles starting from the top of the body, working our way down. This is for two reasons in my opinion. The first reason is because a lot of people have a lot of excess. It's kind of considered the general idea. So typically if somebody has a lot of excess, we would start from the top and we would work our way down as almost like a flushing down towards the feet. You can see a lot of people use those Japanese foot pads they put on the bottoms of their feet to suck all the bad stuff out and get it away from the core and from the heart. So when we go top down, we are reducing. So that means that if we put needles in from the feet going up, that would be a tonification method. This is especially important if, if I just kind of paint a picture for you, if we have a male patient, they're full of fire, maybe they drink quite a bit of alcohol, they like their red meat, they've got a red face, they've got red ears, they show you your tongue, their tongue rather, and they've got tons of red prickles all over their tongue. This would not be a good idea to put acupuncture needles starting at their feet or even the hands. And the reason again is because Dr. Tan calls it the puppet show. But what we have here is this is a mirror image of the head. And of course the feet are a mirror image of the head as well. The farther down we get, let's say for example, liver three would affect mostly the eyes, whereas liver two would be affecting the top of the head. So as soon as we put liver two in, we're kind of activating that area on the head, which can cause things in excess that are focused around the head area to become extremely severe. The same thing could be said about this type of patient and maybe not putting extra head neck uh, Shen Song in the head along with Do 20 again might kind of metaphorically cause their head to pop off, maybe severe headache, that sort of thing. For example, to maybe not use a draining acupuncture treatment, going needles from the top down is again going to paint a very, you know, typical archetype, if you will. If you have a patient and maybe they're a female, they're extremely emaciated, they're cold, they're pale, they're eating a lot of like raw food kind of diet, a draining kind of treatment might not be the best thing for them. And I'm going to go ahead and actually disprove all this in about two seconds, but this is kind of the general consensus with this sort of thing. There's a lot of controversy with these tonification and reduction methods. So typically needling from the top down and taking out from the top down. If you feel like you want to tonify and that's your way of doing it, you're gonna needle from the bottom up and you're gonna take from the bottom up. And some people would argue that you could have a balanced method and you could put needles from the top down and then take them out from the bottom up. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's one way to do it. Another way we can tonify and reduce is we can turn the needles clockwise or counterclockwise. So clockwise is regarded by most people that it is a tonification method and then the other one is a reduction method. Something that's interesting about this is in regards to some another method is to turn the needles towards the center line or away from the center line is a way to tonify and reduce. So I'm going to just draw it here. So this is the head and this is the center line. If you turn the needles 
this way. So this needle on this side would be going clockwise, this one would be going counterclockwise. That's a tonification method. But then if we were to turn this needle counterclockwise and turn this needle clockwise, this would be a reduction method. So that's where you can get a disparity between saying, hey, listen, if I'm going to go towards the center line or I'm actually just going to say clockwise, counterclockwise. So that's why that one kind of disproves itself, if you will. <clears throat> this one is kind of interesting because, as we know, there are different methods of acupuncture. There's different styles of acupuncture. So you could look at Dr. Tan or Tung or Chow Chen style acupuncture and you could say, hey, listen, this patient's got a headache and it hurts really, really bad on this side of the face. And you might find that treating same side liver channel on the foot takes that pain away just like that. So that might be a way to practice an acupuncture style. It'll go against that principle that uh, we've just determined that works really, really well. And this is essentially a mirroring style. I'm just going to erase this and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about a couple more. All right, so another one that's very common is needling towards the channel and against the channel. So of course needling towards the channel would be a tonification method and against the direction of the channel would be a reduction method. Another thing we have is breathing in and breathing out. So if you insert the needle and you get your patient to take a deep breath in, that is a tonification method. If you get them to breathe out, that's another one up for reduction. Another one that is quite common is heavily thrusting and heavily lifting. So taking the needle and very careful, remember is safety is king. So we want to make sure that we can maintain the angle. If there's any way, shape or form that I'm needling on a 45 or typically even like on a 15 degree angle, I'm not touching the needle. I'm a kind of set it and forget it kind of guy. I don't like to do playing a lot with the needles. However, this is a tonification method. So please keep your patients safe. So heavily thrusting, pulling the needle out and thrusting, this is known as a tonification method. And of course, if we gently put the needle in and we take it out quickly and we place it back in, obviously keeping it in the skin at the same time, this is a reduction method. I'm going to erase this one more time. I've got one more for you, and then I'm going to give you my general consensus on all this stuff. So one more for you, and this would be plugging the hole when you take the needle out and trying to spread the hole where the needle was as you take the needle out. So in this case, if you are quick to take the needle out and you press that hole nice and tight, that is a tonification method. You want to keep the chi in. If you slowly take the needle out, maybe even wiggle it and almost picturing that the hole is getting bigger that you've created, and then you spread the skin as you take it out, that is known as a reduction method.
Because qi and blood are so, so closely aligned together in Chinese medicine, this makes sense in the case where if you could get a little spot of blood to come out, you would be reducing that qi and blood out of that organ, etc. Whereas if you were to plug the hole and not allow any blood to come out, then you'd be tonifying. So as you can see, there are lots and lots of different ways and for my provincial examination, I actually had to demonstrate two different ways where I could show tonification and reduction. And with this counterclockwise, clockwise, lifting, thrusting, all this kind of stuff, I was quite nervous because you could go either way on those things. Now I did pick to going towards the channel and away from the channel as one of them. And then I chose heavily thrusting for a tonification and heavily pulling for a reduction. And I felt that those two could not be debated. But the rest of these ones, they can kind of be debated. Maybe even this one can't be debated. So with all these different methods and styles of acupuncture and different ways to approach Chinese medicine, in my mind, I think it's practitioner dependent. I think you have to figure out what works best for you, what makes the most sense. If you're a little bit more on the artistic side of things, you might decide that you can do these counterclockwise, clockwise things. You might be able to do more manipulations, that, that, say, that sort of thing. Whereas I'm a little bit more left-brained, I'm a little bit more, for lack of a better term, scientific on these things. And I think a lot of these methods, they are against each other. So again, I'm big on safety. So for those two reasons, safety and the inability to figure out why there are methods that are contrary to each other, I just choose to set it and forget it. For example, on the back shoe points, this is the inner line of the back shoe. I typically needle 45 going towards the spine. And then the next outer back shoe goes 45 away from the spine. That way I don't contend with any tonification or reduction method and I know I'm actually being safe because I can bump up against the spine. If I make a mistake, I'm only gonna use a one inch needle all the way down to about L1, L2, depending on body shape and size. And then I'm, I'm fanning out to get underneath the shoulder blade and away from the center line. So I hope that helps. A lot of tonification reduction methods Find stuff that works for you. Find stuff that makes sense in your heart and in your practice. And make sure that you're keeping your patients safe when you're using these methods. Typically, we don't recommend you know, doing any tonification reduction method where you're thrusting the needle from you know, the, the entire core. Arms and legs are totally fine. And that's where untrained or poorly trained individuals will get themselves into trouble is because they won't set it and forget it. Safety is king, bedside manner is king, and results are king in that order. Thanks for hanging out with me, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for the viewer question.